Yvonne was asking you about, I believe, the FMC, weren't you, uh, Yvonne? Well, I was going to say, you know, once we get these debt ceiling talks done, and we're hearing that actually they're done for, for the night, at least the U.S. Capitol, but once this is all done and dusted, we can move past this, I think the market's going to once again focus on the Fed, of all things, right? And, you know, we see Treasuries actually have been selling off for the last two weeks or so. But the market still really focused so much on, on price or cuts, I should say, from the Fed. When are we going to see that resolve, right, between what the Fed says and what the markets say? Yeah, first of all, uh, at the moment, we get uh, quite a differentiated uh, picture. We have uh, Jerome Powell informing us on Friday he's more looking at a pause. We had a lot of, lot of Fed speak this week already talking about uh, more rate hikes. And uh, yes, maybe there's one more rate hike uh, now in June on the cards, maybe uh, a pause. But what is for sure is we're getting to the end of the rate hike cycle for the Fed. And I think the market is very much occupied to find out when are they starting to cut and uh, how will be the impact on the market. And, um, you know, very important uh, takeaway uh, for you is that at Deutsche Bank, uh, we actually see no rate, ha no rate cuts for this year coming uh, and also not before mm. the second quarter of next year. And this is quite a non-contrarian in, co uh, in comparison to what the market is pricing. Yeah, and Stephanie, the thing is, you're probably right in doing so in some ways, because, I mean, is inflation, which is now being described as sticky, going to be here for longer, given uh, changes in the structure of uh, global, the global economy, the greening here, the ageing as well, uh, uh, as all this going on, which uh, does increase uh, perhaps some of the costs involved with day-to-day uh, -day doings? Yes, I think the Fed uh, will find it difficult uh, um, and will err on the side of caution to be too preemptive this time around and will look at, uh, you know, the leading and the lagging indicators to come together and have a clear picture of a recession before um, cutting rates. You exactly said the, uh, about inflation because you enter inflation, uh, you enter uh, recession at this time with the still inflation being above target, so that makes it more difficult. We have all these... Um, um, uh, you know, um, uh, conversations in the mix that are very uh, political around the U.S. debt ceiling. We still have the U.S. regional bank uh, problematic going on. And of course, um, you know, um, these political outcomes will also be informed by what the Fed is doing. And again, uh, most probably then it's uh, better to be on the side of caution for the Fed. And last but not least, uh, you have uh, such an aggressive rate hike cycle. Actually, it's prudent, most probably, to take a blueprint of other central banks and to pause for a while, assess mm. what the, uh, how the economy is digesting what you did, um, and then um, take it from there. What, what is your preferred asset class at the moment, Stephanie? Our first part of call is definitely fixed income. So with this uh, backdrop that I explained, with inflation staying higher for longer, um, coming down but staying definitely above the central bank target, um, the central bank reaction function will not look at cutting rates uh, that soon as the market is expecting. Fixed income is definitely an asset class to consider. However, with the recessionary backdrop, it is the investment grade and the high quality space that we focus on in our investments.